but can your scaler do this? Hey guys, Rich here from the RCNetwork.com and today we're gonna be doing an unboxing of the Axial UMG10 6x6. Yes, I did say 6x6. Now, I've been looking at this thing for a little while now and I never thought I'd ever get a 6x6, but I kept looking at it and I looked at the Traxxas version and I kept looking at this one and I picked up a 6x6. Now, of course, in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at what you get inside of the box here and just some of my opinions of this one, maybe versus the Traxxas version. Now, I'm not too fond of that Mercedes look of the Traxxas version, uh, but I really kind of like this UMG 10 or Unimog style. I dig that it's a little bit longer wheelbase than the standard UMG 10, the four by four, but the six by six, it just, it just kept growing on me. And once I saw the independent kind of rear axles here, it spoke to me a little bit more than just the standard six by sixes that you do see out there. Now, I think this was actually the first released one. However, I believe Traxxas actually beat Axial to market. So this was released uh, around Proline by the Fire event. And of course, uh, it got out a little bit later on in the year, right after the Traxxas TRX-6 came out. So a quick tour around the box, of course, the military style UMG 10, this looks pretty cool. I mean, I've got to say, I've already got it out of the box, so there's there's nothing inside of here. Uh, but l looking at the box art, it just looks like it can destroy things, which I definitely like. Taking a look at some of the bells and whistles that actually come on this UMG 10 6x6, you get some pretty cool stuff. Now, Axial has been known to kind of not equip RTRs all that well. And I've seen a little bit of a change lately, especially with the Capra that they released. Um, but on this one, they give you some pretty cool things like the tandem rear axle, hinged body system, chassis mounted servo, of course, all metal gears. You do have a molded plastic grill and some scale details. So we'll go over a little bit later on the body. Um, extended frame rails uh, to get that six by six look. Two piece bed design, which is another really cool thing. Spare tire also. You get some LED lights both front and rear, although I'm a little bit bummed that the actual headlights are not lighted. And of course you do have the AR44 universal axle set. The Spectrum and Horizon has kind of taken over all of the electronics now on axial vehicles. You do have the STX2 transmitter, a Dynamite ESC, which is kind of similar to the one previous, the AE5L, the L means, takes a lighting system, does come with drag brake. Of course, a Spectrum Servo now is featured on axial rigs. I think previous it was Tactic. I think this might be the first vehicle uh, that has actually come with a Spectrum Servo. And then finally, the SRX200 receiver to mate up with the STX2. I did see an axial canned brush motor in this vehicle. We'll go over that a little bit later. Before we get to the star of the show, the UMG 10 6x6, let's go over some supplement items that come inside of the box. Starting with some official UMG 6x6 decals. It's pretty cool that they actually included specific decals for the UMG 6x6. A very thick owner's manual, once again, for the UMG 10 6x6. This is all 6x6 specific inside this book. A couple of old fashioned axial trail markers and a T-wrench. I'm gonna mail these off to Matt Kett here a little bit later. A bag with a three-way steering wheel, some other horns and some bits and pieces. Another bag with a bunch of rod ends, drive shaft pieces, bumper mounts and some other bits and pieces. An ax and a fire extinguisher, a shovel and a hammer. Count them three bull horns or mustaches, whatever you'd like. Some very underappreciated wire separators. Cut all these out. These things are cool. Use them on all of your builds. A bind plug for that STX2 transmitter. And finally, the Spectrum STX2 transmitter. It's the first time I've actually seen one in person here. It's a lot of plastic, <laughs> including the wheel, the handle. Uh, it, this is bare bones to say the least. You do have everything you need in a RTR radio, including dual rates, trims, and of course, channel reversing. And it does run off of four double A's that you have to supply yourself. And finally, the UMG 10 six by six. This thing is massive. When you really get it in front of yourself and really look at the entire length of this thing, 
it is huge, uh, especially when you look at a lot of just 10 scale scalers out there. This thing is definitely large and in charge. The body, we're gonna spend a little bit of time on the body here because it's fantastic. It's probably the best looking body that I've seen on an Axial to date. It's actually a painted body. There's a lot of features on this thing that I definitely wanna cover. So first, let's just start off with just a measurement of this thing. I mean, if you were to look at the wheelbase between the first and second axle, it's right about 12 inches. Now the overall wheelbase is right at 17 and like three eighths. And I'm just taking real world measurements here. I'm sure the actual uh, ones that are on the box are just slightly different. So bear that in mind. Now the overall length, I think they had it listed at 23. I'm getting 24 inches from bumper to the rear bed here. So this thing is, is pretty large. Now the overall height of this thing, up to the top of the cab is right about 10 and a little bit, 10 and an eighth. So this thing is definitely on the large size of scalers. Starting off with the wheels and tires, these things are pretty cool. I really like the military look of these tires. Now, they are a pretty grippy uh, tread design, and they are very thin. I mean, they have a, a very thin profile here that you would not see on a normal 1.9 rig. Now, the wheels are actually plastic, but they are beadlocks, true beadlock. They kind of bolt in from the back uh, of the wheel, and they do have that very nice military styling with the center and inflation hubs right there. I believe that's what it's called. And lots of scale looks to this thing. So it doesn't actually look like an RC wheel. So back to the body again, specifically the front cab. Once again, this is a painted body, it has a kind of flat finish to it, which is pretty nice. And lots of molded plastic parts that give you that scale look on this body. Of course, you do have door handles right here. You do have folder mirrors that actually have a mirror look to the actual face of the mirror right here. You do have windshield wipers. You do have LED light buckets here on the headlights. However, no LEDs are included on these particular lights. You do have a molded plastic grill with some other light inserts, although these are not functioning lights that I could tell. And you do have a plastic radiator that sits behind the grill. So nice added touches. The plastic bumper is affixed to the chassis and you do have working LED lights inside of that bumper and a fair lead hole. Flipping it to the other side, you do have that military style snorkel right here on the passenger side or the right side of the vehicle. Moving on to the bed, you do have a full drop bed and you do have some parts here that just allow for the shock hoops. We do have a molded plastic cage and an included spare tire that's fully functional. This isn't just for looks, this is actually a seventh wheel and tire that's included on this six by six. Now looking into the drop bed, it is a full depth bed and it is once again painted and it's the flat side. So you have a good contrast. It's not that gloss shiny black that you'd expect from a painted body. Nice details that Axial did on this one. Finally, on the rear tailgate, you do get two more red LED lights for your taillights. You do have a little license plate holder here for that great UMG 6x6 license plate that's on the decal sheet. And then finally, no other bumper back here on the back 40 yards of this vehicle. Getting the body out of the way is pretty easy. Simply just pull these two body clips on the underside of the chassis here, which has a once again, another nice touch. These things pop out and you're able to go ahead and lift up the entire body off the rig. It's hinged on the rear part of the chassis rails. Nice touch once again. With everything flipped on its side so I can really show you guys some of the details of this body on the underside, you can definitely see the radiator here that pokes through that front grille, the body mounts right here that mount to the chassis, the headlight buckets right there. You do have different supporting pieces in here just to support some of the additional features. And of course, you do have these kind of Tamiya style body clips right here holding on the door handles and of course those nice mirrors. Further down here on the bed, you have 
have a plastic structure here for the bed, just how it hinges on to the rear bumper mount here on the chassis rails. And this bed is all bolted in together into the sides of the bed. So th this thing is highly detailed. And I mean, literally this is probably like a $150 body. If you really take into effect all the work that went into it to paint it, all the, the molding on it and the trims, and it's a two piece design with the cab being one piece and the bed being another piece with actually two pieces all bolted together. Now that we spent about a half hour on the body, let's take a look at the chassis. Now this is pretty much a typical SEX 10 2 RTR chassis, except they just happen to bolt on an extra set of wheels and tires at the back of this thing. So uh, if you take that into effect, it's pretty much standard that we've seen the last couple of years on the Axial RTRs. Now, once again, starting all the way up front, you do have that molded plastic bumper with the LEDs pre-installed, which is a nice touch. I wish I would have seen those in the LED light buckets, but I understand why they didn't do it. If you were to flip this thing over, they'd be attached and it would be just hard to deal with as far as all of the wiring. Now, further on back here, you do have the battery tray here that can fit standard stick style battery packs from 2S to 3S capable. On down the line, you do have the Spectrum S605 servo. Now this does have quite a bit of torque at 161 ounce inches, but the transit time is a little slow at 0.24 seconds. Although it is waterproof, it does have plastic gears and it is an analog servo. All six shocks on this UMG 6x6 are plastic bodied axial shocks. The piggyback kind of reservoir style shocks. They do feel pretty good, but it would have been nice to see aluminum bodied shocks on here, even without the reservoir, but this will definitely get you started on day one. In the center of the UMG 6x6, you do have the waterproof receiver tray right here, and you do have the Dynamite ESC. This is kind of like an AE5L ESC with drag brake. It's capable of anywhere from 2S to 3S, and it does have a jumper box right here. Jumper one provides just a simple choice between LiPo or nickel metal hydride, and the other one is for your drag brake settings. It does come stock with an IC3 connector, and it is a waterproof ESC. Not mentioned on the box is the Axial 35 turn brushed motor. These are pretty much a great starter motor to get you started and you can run 3S on these things all day long. Flipping it on its side, this is where all the magic happens on a six by six. Just when you thought you had added costs from your four by four scaler, we'll add on a whole nother axle and there you go once again. You do have a four link, four link, and three link with pan hard as far as the setup. These are all steel links and they're going into the traditional plastic rod ends that you'd find on traditional axial vehicles. As far as the count on the amount of links, you do have four, four, three, and three. That gives you a total of 14 links. That's a lot of links. If we start looking at drive shafts, you do have the tiny one back here. You do have a center drive shaft and a front drive shaft. So lots of drive shafts, lots of links. You do have six shocks, six wheels and tires. There's a lot going on underneath this thing, but that's where all the magic happens. But can your scaler do this? Well, guys, that is a quick look at my brand new Axial UMG 10 6x6. I cannot wait to get this thing out to one of my local crawler spots and just see how much terrain this thing can just soak up and eat for lunch. So can't wait to get this thing out there. Show some great running footage. Plan to go out there this Friday. Hopefully there's no rain here in Southern California and really get this thing out and see what it can do. I wanna test out those two rear axles and just see how much stuff it can really climb over. Now with that, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Is a six by six gonna make it under your tree this year for Christmas? Is it something that's even on your radar? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comment section. And as always, if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you're alerted every time I upload a video, which would be awesome. As always, my name is Rich. Thanks for watching.